Can you all hear me okay? Um, I first I wanted to introduce um, Rabbi Guttenberg, Rabbi Shia Guttenberg, our head of school, to give us a Dvar Torah, which is what we usually typically do at our board meetings. So please, Rabbi Shia Guttenberg, please give us your Dvar Torah and then we'll take it from there. Thank you. Thank you. So in this week's Parsha, Parsha Shalach, we learn about the famous, or some people call them the infamous spies that, that existed back in the times when the Jewish people were in a desert. And they went and spied out the land of Israel. And what's interesting was that when they reached Israel, they came back and they saw the beautiful aspects of Israel. They saw Eretz, Zavas, Chalavu, Devasha, land flowing of milk and honey. And they saw the clusters of grapes that were so big, they needed to be transported by two people. But they also came back and they spoke negatively. And they said, we saw these Nifilim, Vishamra Inu as Nifilim. We saw these Nifilim, B'nai Anak, the children of these giants. And the, the Nifilim actually appear only two times in the entire Torah. They appear at the end of, of Parshas Bereshis in a story that is more mystical than any Kabbalistic moment because there's, there's children of gods that are called Nifilim. And they existed back then, and they also existed inside Israel. And the, and the Miraglim came back and, and they cried out, how can we accomplish, how can we go to this land? The people there are so big. And they cried out that night. And the Gemara three times says, The night that the Miraglim cried, was Tisha B'Av. Amr HaKadosh Baruch Hu, God said to them, Heim bachu b'chia shalchinam. You cried a simple, a, a b'chia of chinam, a crying of nothing, of emptiness. Vani ekebel lehem b'chia ledorot. I will make sure that there will be a crying for generations. And so the spies saw the positive of the land. They saw the beautiful aspects of the land but they also saw the challenges that await in the land. And they came back and they said, we cannot overcome the giants. We cannot overcome the Nephilim. We cannot overcome what awaits ahead of us. So we're gonna focus not on the positive, but we're gonna focus on the challenge that awaits. Tonight, we're, we are going to explain the challenges that await. We all know we have challenges us in every single Jewish day school, every single private school, every single school has challenges that await us. And, it, and for us, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna look at the, the negative? Or are we gonna look at the positive? Are we gonna look at the challenges and say, yes, here are all the obstacles that we have in front of us. Here are the challenges, here are the giants. And here's how we're going to attempt to overcome every single obstacle. Because we also have Miraglim now. We also have our spies now. We're not spying out different land, but we're on search. We're looking to see how can we overcome everything that awaits. And if we go back to those Nephilim, those children of God, shall we say, Rashi, both at the end of, of Parsha Spiratius and also here, explained that the word Nephilim comes from Nishorish Nafal. They fell. They're fallen from God. And the, and the, the Bali Musar, the, the, the Musar great rabbis explain that Sheva Yipal Tzadik, that a Tzadik falls seven times, Avokam, come. But they get up after each fall, no matter what. And we hope that no matter what challenge awaits our school, our community, we will keep arising to the occasion. We won't speak about the negative Dibata Aretz, but we'll speak about the land, the school flowing of milk and honey, where children come and reunite back in our school and we can repopulate our campus and we can have a beautiful start to the year. So thank you for the opportunity to share the Torah. Back to you, Iris. Hi, everybody. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Iris Hussain. I'm the president of the Hebrew Academy Board of Directors. Um, first, let me start by saying that I have a tremendous interest in all that is going on in our school, as we have four children ourselves in the school. Um, Kayla just finished the ninth grade, Talia the seventh grade, Levi the sixth, and Leora the fourth. As a family, we're going into our 10th year at the Hebrew Academy. 
Um, and we've been here since early childhood and now up until high school. Some of you are probably wondering what is this annual meeting that we're invited to. Pursuant to the bylaws of the Board of the Directors, we have private monthly meetings with one open annual meeting a year in May or June, which you're all attending right now. So welcome to all of you. I see there's a lot of you on here and I appreciate all of you coming tonight to, have, to hear what we have to say. Um, in recent years, we've had presentations by principals and students showcasing the various divisions and moving stories by our students about their various successes. Tonight, we're gonna to focus on something a little bit different, whereby I'll be informing you of the board's role and activities in light of the circumstances that we have going on. And um, we will hopefully vote in also and affirm our new board slate, followed by a presentation on the reopening of our school campus this August by our head of school, Rabbi Shia Gottenberg, and our Dean of Academics and Innovation, Rabbi Avi Boswich. I have, I have quite a few things to say to you tonight, um, so please bear with me. I'll try to get through it as quickly as possible so that you can hear their presentation. Um, we, you know, I know we all really missed being together for the last three months of the school year. The kids really terribly miss being with each other and with their teachers in person, but some amazing moments still took place at our school nevertheless. We recently managed to have very meaningful graduations, such as the high school graduation that, that I attended by Zoom, or actually I think it was Facebook Live, um, and in, which included a, a beautiful tribute also to David Molrad, and we had the eighth grade graduation, the fifth grade seum, and my all time personal favorite, Mrs. Shochet, the third grade seum. Mazel tov to all of the students and the parents. Um, last night I got to see an amazing display from our middle school. It's a must see by all called the Names Not Numbers production by the eighth grade that streamed live on Facebook yesterday. And I think it's so popular that it's streaming again, where the eighth graders learn how to interview and edit film and they interviewed for Holocaust survivors. It was phenomenal. It was so well done. It gave me goosebumps. Such an important learning experience in Holocaust education at our school for our children. And I really urge you all to watch it as soon as you can. Hebrew Academy is more than what meets the eye. It's more than the subjects that we teach, like math and science. Although it's all important, we are something more intangible than that. Being a Hebrew Academy warrior is about the beautiful end product of the person a warrior becomes, which is different than any other school out there. A warrior is someone who is kind, who is emotionally and intellectually honest and strong, and has the ability to stand for what he or she believes in. Being at the Hebrew Academy consistently while the child grows for years instills these greater values while at the same time fostering deep lifelong friendships not really witnessed in too many other places. Um, I've seen that recently on our, on our alumni with Zoom alumni events and just the things I hear about the long lasting lifetime friendships that that start at the Hebrew Academy. When our students and graduates go out into the world and inspire people around them, they're often, they're often asked, which school did you go to? And when they answer the Hebrew Academy, the response is, aha, okay, that explains it. Because there's something there that's more than meets the eye. We're unique in this way, in the way that we are family. Our school is large enough to offer a variety of programming, but small enough for each individual child's talents and strengths can be highlighted and fostered. Each one of us, the parents and the school's employees, the volunteers, we're all invested in this community together. We are all shareholders of this amazing school. During this time of crisis and uncertainty, the Hebrew Academy has been immersed in community work also, not just to help ourselves, but to be an in integral part of the surrounding community. With volunteer workers from the school, we're giving out about 150 children's kosher grab-and-go lunches funded by the state of Florida, advocated for by Teach Florida, the Jewish advocate for government funding for our schools and students. Every day in front of the school, we have, we have a carpool line of people picking up grab-and-go lunches. I really wanted to, even though I already started talking, but I really wanted to start this, this talk with you with great appreciation, really, by saying thank you first and foremost to the entire staff. 
including the teachers, the administrators, the business office, and all of the office staff and the maintenance department. We could not do what we do without their enormous dedication, commitment, and flexibility. On behalf of the parents, we are indebted to all of you for going above and beyond the past three months. I want to give you a very, a give actually a very specific and special thank you to Rabbi Avi Bosowich, who has worked endlessly and tirelessly since our, our response to COVID began. And even while losing his own parents, his father, Zichronon Livracha, to COVID, with his background and prior experience in blended learning and online platforms, Rabbi Bosowich steered our entire program to distant learning. We did a great job compared to other schools. And this is really a great part, thanks to Rabbi Bosowich's efforts. So thank you very much, Rabbi Bosowich. Thank you so much to the parents for being giants during this time. You have been supportive of our school and staff and very patient and understanding. You have sat with your children for distant learning, kept up with all of their needs, made them lunches, gave them hugs, supported your kids and the school during this time. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts we appreciate all that you have done in partnership with the school. You have all been amazing. Also, thank you to the parents who completed the survey. The results informed the school and the program tremendously and also served to encourage a partnership and a dialogue with our families. After all, we want to build a school around the needs and desires of our families. So when we want to hear, so, so we want to hear from you, please, and it's important that we hear from you. Based on the newest and most recent guidelines to come from the state of Florida, just last week on June 11th, we plan to reopen the school campus this August with all the students attending the campus on all the days while adhering to any recommended health and social distancing guidelines that are, that are in place by the CDC, the state of Florida, the Department of Health, local health officials, and our own medical committee. We will have an option for those who need to attend school virtually. The school's current campus reopening plans will be presented later this hour by Rabbi Shia Guttenberg and Rabbi Avi Basowich. Please understand, as you know, this is a fluid and could be a rapidly changing situation. We are doing the best we can, constantly preparing at the school to respond as best as possible. Just to circle back, this is after all a board meeting that you're all invited to. So some of you may be wondering, what does the board do at the Hebrew Academy and why is it especially relevant right now? So the first thing I want you all to know is with everything we do, we keep the mission of the Hebrew Academy in our mind. And if, in case you don't know what our mission statement is, this is the mission statement. Through the light of the Torah and academic excellence, the Hebrew Academy inspires each and every child to improve the world. The basic responsibilities of the board include determining this mission and purpose, selecting and hiring a head of school, which is Rabbi Gottenberg, as you heard from earlier. He is our only hire. We support and evaluate the head of school. We, we do strategic planning. We build a competent board, which is part of what we're going to do tonight by voting in a new board slate for the, for the next coming school year. We ensure legal and ethical integrity. We enhance our public standing and reputation. We monitor and strengthen our programs and services, working to make sure that the programs and services we offer are effective and consistent with our mission. One of our foremost responsibilities is to ensure adequate financial resources, including protecting our assets and financial oversight. We assist in developing an annual budget and ensure there are proper financial controls in place. To, to achieve this, we also have a responsibility to for each of the board members to be heavily involved in fundraising. The board also creates working committees and we have several committees in, in place right now that have been working very hard, especially lately. One of those, I'll just go through some of the main committees and such as the executive board, which meets bi-weekly and functions as the head of school support. We have the governance bylaws committee that this, this past school year started to work on revamping and modernizing the bylaws that are from 2009 to be more simple, easy to read and comprehend and to reflect the reality of what we do. So I wanna give a special thank you to one of our board members, Michael Budwick for chairing this committee. 
And we also have a head of school evaluation committee that has met a couple of time this, times this year to evaluate Rabbi Shia Guttenberg. Special thank you to Dan, Daniel Sragowitz for chairing this committee. We have a security committee that over time works with the help of funding, including key grants such as the Homeland Security Grant to improve security at our school campus, including physical upgrades like cameras, new gates, entry systems. We also upgraded our security company and have all armed guards on our campus. A very important committee is our development fundraising committee. With, we have a couple of key board members that will be named as general development co-chairs this coming year. That is Jean Kim Lehman and Marjan Katz. They're very active in assisting our new development director, Susie Stern. We involve key lay leaders and volunteers for subcommittees that cover our annual campaign. So I wanna give a special shout out and thank you to Diana Sragowitz and to Audrey Ben Susan for co-chairing. And thank you to other parts of our fundraising committees, such as our, fund, our dinner chairs, Rachel Lowey and Nicole Cavana. And we have other initiatives to raise money throughout the year for our annual fund, like the Warrior Auction. So thank you to Lindsay Schottenstein, Hani Gottlieb, Shuli Boswich, and several others. We also created a capital campaign task force this past year that met for the, for the new middle school, high school complex that met prior to the COVID situation. I wanna thank all of the lay leaders and the volunteers, those that I mentioned by name and others that know who you are, who pitch in with all of these efforts. Since COVID, the shift has changed a bit in our development fundraising efforts, but the, the development office with the assistance of lay leaders is still going very strong. A very important initiative that was created in response to the current situation is called the Grant Task Force Committee. I wanna give a very special thank you to Hillary Holland, to Dory Schwartz and to Miriam Abrahams who are, who are on this committee, who are on the board and they're on this committee and they're on the lookout for grants and, in the app, and that are currently in the application process. For example, we've got a few new grants such as grants for strategic planning, for tuition assistance grants, and an, an emergency fund for Jewish communal professionals through the G, a, new, a new initiative called JCRIF, which is the Jewish Communi Community Response and Impact Fund, which is being facilitated by PRISMA. Our Director of Development, Susie Stern, is working on building and organizing our contacts database and has, has already utilized it to have a really fun alumni Zoom event that I crashed recently. And uh, we've, which we've got a lot of alumni. We've got 72 years of alumni. So that was a really fun event, seeing them see each other again for after many years. And I know that there's some follow-up small alumni events because it was such a success. In partnership with lay leaders, the development office also created, in response to the situation that we are in right now, an emergency COVID relief fund that you can donate to in order to assist in scholarships for those in need at, at our school. So I wanted to actually give a very special shout out to my friends and fellow board member, Sarit Zohar, who took this initiative and ran with it immediately. If you don't know her yet, Sarit Zohar has her own busy interior design business. And while dealing with her own business and COVID, she felt a deep and sincere need to help the school's emergency relief fund. She used our new emergency COVID fund to reach out to all of her own contacts that do not have a direct connection to the school. And she raised a nice sum of donations for the school. So thank you so much, Sarit Zohar. We also have a technology committee that's, that's, that has been active over the years, but especially, especially lately. This is a committee made up of lay leaders like Daniel Sragwitz, Evelyn Katz, Mark, Mark Herskowitz, and we had got administrators like uh, Rabbi Avi Bosowicz and the IT staff. This committee deals with the school's ongoing technology needs and makes decisions regarding purchases, upgrades, and repairs for the school. Most recently, you will probably hear more about this actually momentarily during the presentation by uh, Rabbi Bosowicz and, and Rabbi Guttenberg. We've been preparing. This is the most recent, recent update, but we've been preparing to outfit the school's classrooms with enormous technological capabilities to manage virtual learning in every direction imaginable. We plan to, to, we plan to out for the school over the summer with these upgrades 
This is a great valuable undertaking by the school to service any children who must attend the school virtually. And in case we have to go on to online school and to look at this as an opportunity to advance our standing as a school in general and our future offerings to our students and families. Um, we've also got the finance committee, which has been obviously a very active committee lately. And we typically deal with the school's annual budget and work closely with the business office. As you can imagine, in the current situation, the finance committee has been very, very busy. We meet often for many hours at a time, including with the head of school, Rabbi Gottenberg, for several hours at a time, like I said, to respond to every facet of the current predicament that we are in. So recently with the sanctioning of the board and, and a focus on overall fiscal responsibility to, due to the recent and current economic situation, we've instilled several cost cutting measures to the school. For example, we are looking into refinancing um, a, a small mortgage that we have for the rest of the school year, um, for the rest of this school year since about May 1st and, and, and for, the, for the next school year as well. Um, there's a couple of small um, cost cutting measures to the to the employees, such as um, such as not buying back PTO days, such as not contributing to um, their pension plans temporarily, and also to cut some additional stipends from the from the employees. Furthermore, we also we also in, instituted a salary freeze for the employees for the next school year with 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 very little flexibility and some extenuating circumstances. Um, furthermore, the administration is reviewing general and inefficiencies in our programs and cutting programs that we do not utilize or that are redundant in order to also um, help us to save some money. Probably the one of the most important financial actions that we've taken since COVID began, we meaning the finance committee and the board was to jump on the PPP, which is the Paycheck Protection Program provided by the Federal CARES Act. The Finance Committee, including myself, and a very special thank you and shout out to Mark, Mark Herskowitz, who's our treasurer, for the many hours we spent, and especially he spent, to ensure that we obtained this grant, um, this loan, which hopefully will be a grant. Only approximately 50% of nonprofits obtain the grant, but with our tenacity and hard work, we were able to do this. Due to this success, we were able to avoid layoffs and maintain our staff and teachers with their salaries and benefits for the eight weeks that the program covers through June 30th. With projections coming in from umbrella organizations, we do expect to be down in revenue, income and scholarships next year, unfortunately. But it is difficult to predict the amount. Some predict it could be between 15 to 25%. As such, the Finance Committee and the Board in general are doing what we can to accommodate the situation and to accommodate all those involved to be fiscally responsible while still ensuring that we maintain excellent academic standards and a great program for our families. The head of school, Rabbi Guttenberg, has been having town hall meetings with teachers and staff to explain their contracts and to help them understand the situation and be on board with us. Also, please know that the board and its committees do hear, we do listen to and discuss all of the concerns of the parent body. We are experiencing the same things ourselves in our own lives. We understand the financial difficulties experienced by many of our families, including, uh, including unemployment, loss of profits, business closures, and even having your children at home with you when you're trying to work virtually yourselves. We listened and we continue to listen. And these are some of the actions we've taken thus far. For early childhood, the play groups would not, would not have to pay tuition for May and June. And for the preschool grades, nursery two, nursery three, and pre-K, we agreed to a 50-50 tuition arrangement for May and June where 50% would go towards credit for the next school year, or parents have the option to donate the money back to the school. And I'm, I'm happy to report that many of the families chose to donate money back to the school. And I want to thank from the bottom of my, of my heart, those families that chose to donate that tuition back to the school. Thank you very much.
A special hardship scholarship was created for this, with, with, for, for, for this situation also with approximately $150,000 that was allocated to assist about 70 of our families that were in need and contacted the school already for assistance. This is separate and apart from the emergency relief fund. The scholarship committee has been meeting frequently at school to deal with the current higher need for the needs of our families, for the, for the current needs of our families and also for the next school year. So I wanna give a big thank you on behalf of everybody to the scholarship committee for your efforts to doing all that you're able to do to help our families in need. The school also reimbursed or credited various expenses to the families, such as for trips that we weren't able to take, like the local, national, and international trips, for any expenses that were prepaid, like buses and after-school activities. Um, those, those expenses should be, should be reimbursed unless, unless the family has a balance with the school. The bottom line here is that we want you all back in our school and we, we're here to work with all of the families that have re-enrolled and will re-enroll soon. As president of the school, I've placed myself on almost all of the committees mentioned and appear for as many meetings as possible to ensure that we maintain a unified front and to make sure that we're all working towards the same ultimate goals. The Hebrew Academy has been planning and reacting to the current COVID situation since before we closed the campus on March 13th. The long hours and meetings started a couple of weeks prior as we started to get hit with the issues such as how to handle the school trips before they were ultimately canceled and other issues. From the outset, we put together a response committee including lay leaders, administrators, and medical professionals. We started to plan to go virtual, expand our instructional platform, train the teachers, decide on the programs to use, expand our membership to applications like Zoom and other programs well in advance of the ultimate campus closure. This preparation placed us and our families at an advantage. I want you to know also that the Hebrew Academy is not working alone in a bubble during this COVID crisis. The lay leaders, the board members, the head of school, Rabbi Gottenberg, Rabbi Boswich, and other key administrators, also with the help of volunteers, have been putting an enormous amount of hours and effort into managing the current situation and planning for our immediate short term and for the long term. Specific lay leaders such as myself, like Mark Herskowitz, Evelyn Katz, and others, and key administrators are very involved and in constant contact with umbrella organizations like Prisma, SAGE, the Greater Miami Jewish Federation, and the other local federation schools and Teach Florida. Prisma has consolidated a wealth of information and resources for the schools nationally, including webinars and calls that are, that are attended by key board members and administrators at our school. Facilitated by SAGE, which is the Center for the Advancement of Jewish Education and the Greater Miami Federation, Rabbi Gottenberg has weekly roundtables with other heads of schools and board chairs presidents such as myself have roundtables with other board chairs and presidents of the other federation schools bi-weekly. I have one of these meetings tomorrow morning. We attend day school committee meetings with SAGE. These are just some of the contact points that we have with other Jewish day schools and other Jewish organizations in order to inform us and to help us strategize and manage our decisions during this crisis. I encourage our parents to get informed too. You can Google the document called Reopening Florida Schools and the CARES Act by the Department of Education. This just came out last week. It's a, it's a 143 page document that currently informs and gives guidelines to all the schools in Florida on how to safely reopen the schools for this fall. So that's my spiel so far. And I wanted to continue by, by presenting you all with the new board slate. In a moment, I'll, I'll be presenting the new board slate for the coming school year, 2020, 2021, for a vote. I want you to know that the, nom the, nominate, the nominating committee is another board committee. And this committee met several times recently to vet new individuals to join the Hebrew Academy Board of Directors. A, a couple of people retired from the board this year and some other board members have moved around such as off and on to the executive board. My predecessor, I hope she's listening, Jennifer Dobin is retiring from the board. 
On behalf of the board, I wanted to give Jennifer a gigantic thank you for the four years she spent as president of the school before me and her other years of involvement on the board and in the school. In her elegant manner, she brought a refinement to the board and held our board in high standards of professionalism. I sought and valued her counsel tre tremendously and I will miss her insight. So um, if I don't know who's gonna do this, if is it, is it uh, Bertani or Rabbi Gottenberg, I'm going to put up the board slate for all of you to see now. And um, what, what we're gonna do basically is we're going to put a thumb up to the screen, if you don't mind, if you guys can all, whoever's on the call, I know it's a lot of people, to put a thumb up on the screen um, for a minute or two. And I've got some people checking the screens to help me go through the screens. And I will say all in favor, and you guys can put your thumb up, hopefully. <laughs> okay, so here's the new board slate. Um, all in favor. Okay, my, my uh, assistants will be reviewing. Just give me a moment here. You guys can also text me if you want. My, my number is 305-798-8469. <laughs> okay. Well, either way, I wanted to welcome the new board members, um, Michael Edelson, Errol Feldman, Neil Friedman, Rachel Lowey, and Last but not least, Elkhanan Shagalov, we thank you in advance for your commitment to our school and we look forward to working with you. Um, I wanted to just, um, Jean Kim Lehman wanted to say a couple of words. Uh, she is the, uh, she is the, she was the associate chairman of the board. She is now the, going to be the develop, the. Uh, the, the general development co-chair. She's the PTSA president. Jean is one of those people that um, work a tre tremendous amount of hours for the school. All of her heart, blood, soul, and everything is invested. And so I want to introduce Jean, uh, Jean, please. Go ahead, Jean. Wait, sorry. Am I unmuted? Okay. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, Iris, thank you very much for that introduction. Um, my name is Jean Kim Lehman. I'm the um, PTSA co-president with Heidi Wiener. And I just have uh, two quick um, but very important announcements that I wanted to share with everyone tonight. Um, the first is I wanted to offer a very big heartfelt thank you to all of our parent volunteers who donated their time this past year. All of our volunteers bring a lot of positive energy to our community, and that is a very big inspiration, not only to our children, but also to Heidi and to me and to all of our other parents. So thank you for that. Thank you, um, our dear parent body, for your dedication and your commitment to our kids and to your fellow parents and to our growing community. And thank you um, for all of your unwavering support of the PTA and for getting involved in any which way you can. Um, Heidi and I truly appreciate it. Uh, the other very important announcement and very exciting announcement that I wanted to share is that Diana Shragowitz has agreed to join the leadership of the Hebrew Academy PTSA and she will step into the role as the co-president with Heidi Wiener. Uh, Diana is an alumna of the Hebrew Academy and she is also a parent at the school. Uh, where all of our six kids attend. And so because she has a lot of kids, um, she has a very good pulse of everything that is going on in our school. Um, I have worked with Diana in the past uh, eight to 10 years um, in a lot of different capacities. And based on those experiences, I can tell you that Diana is very organized. She comes up with very creative ideas um, and solutions 
and she is very thoughtful in her approach on any project and program. She knows very much the ins and outs of the school and she's very familiar with our teachers, administrators, faculty and staff, and that will be very helpful for her in this new role. Um, Diane also has the ability to juggle many different priorities and she does all of this with a smile. So I know that she will not only succeed in this new role, but she will be a tremendous asset to the PTSA leadership, as well as to the lay leadership at the school. So I will stay on um, for the coming year to work with Diana and Heidi to ensure that we have a seamless transition. Um, but then after that, I will be stepping down. Um, I want to thank you, uh, Diana, for taking on um, this new role. I welcome you, and I'm very excited to have you on board. Um, once again, a big thank you to all of our parents. I wish you all a very healthy and safe summer, and I look forward to seeing you all back on campus in August. Thank you, Jean. I just wanted to now um, hand it over to Rabbi Shia Guttenberg and Rabbi Avi Bosowich to discuss the opening plans for our campus for this coming August and to answer uh, questions that were posed by our parents. Thank you very much. Thank you, Iris. So if you could, um, and thank you to all the um, past board members and to the new, mem to the new, new board members. Um, thank you to the entire board and thank you to the staff. Um, although our physical campus has closed, we know that learning has continued and that um, that happened because of our incredible teachers and dedicated staff in the school. So a special thank you to all of our teachers and staff who have worked extra hard to make sure the learning can continue. And last but not least, a special thank you to the parents. I know that it was definitely not easy having children at home, juggling everything, and you were all rock stars throughout this entire process and allowing the learning to continue. So I wanna explain a little about, about the goal to open our campus. That is our goal that, you know, we would like to open our campus come August 24th. Um, now I'm gonna explain what is, you know, what we call, this is gonna be the roadmap to reopen. So the mission of Hebrew Academy has not changed. Uh, the mission through the light of Torah and academic excellence, the Hebrew Academy inspires each and every child to improve the world. And as we've seen over the last few months, last few years in our school, is that the school continues to empower students to really imp improve the world and to change the world. And we, we have seen that as Iris explained, you know, through the last few months of students online, watching last night's video, Name is Not Numbers, hearing alumni speak about, about their experience in Hebrew Academy was all just really powerful to hear. But although the mission has changed, um, although the mission has not changed, the vision of our school has changed recently. Um, we now need to have faced uncertainties um, as we move towards the future. And so the goal of our vision right now is to reopen our campus come August 24th. Along with that, we know that there are some children who will not feel comfortable being on campus, will not be able to be on campus because of their health conditions or because family members who they live with and their health conditions. So we are equipping our, our entire campus with the highest level of technology so that students at home can still be, be a participant in the school setting to the best of our ability. And so, um, many of you came just to hear whether or not we're going to open. A couple of you called me and have, have came to school. Um, that is our goal. Our goal is to open our campus. The question really is, is how are we going to open our campus? What does it take? So we divided the, the task into four categories. And within these four categories, we actually have 12 committees that are working continuously and working together in order to open the campus. The first one is the health and safety and the well-being of our students on campus and our staff on campus. They're working in conjunction with the operations and the logistics of all of it. Simultaneously, the education and of course, partnership and communication with the parent body. And so it's really taken into this slide here where each one of these committees are, and have subcommittees 
have been working to make sure that everything is safe, that, the, the, um, that we're monitoring and evaluating the guidelines from the state, screening and security, and all these slides will be available over the next two days for you to analyze and look at much more closely. And we have educational committees e e even further and communicating with, with all of the parent body um, of, of, of our, our school. So when we get to the safety of the campus, so as you can see with regards to safety, we have a medical committee that is researching what is being done, not just in our city of Miami Beach, not just in the county of Miami-Dade, not just in, the, in, the, in our country, but worldwide participating in webinars, calling schools from around the world to understand what worked for you and what didn't work for you. How is testing and screening being done as students enter a campus? campus. How are we continuously sanitizing and cleaning campus? Which products and which, which items can we use to have the most efficient cleaning so that we can potentially clean a room as quickly as five minutes for a transition of students? Which protective, uh, the PPP, protective, uh, per personal protective equipment should we have? How are we going to implement social distancing, mask, athletics, all of those things are taken into the safety and we have committees who are analyzing every single one of them. At the end, I'm gonna uh, post uh, the questions that were asked. There were, what I did is I took all the questions and summarized them into the basic questions from everyone. And a couple of the questions were regarding masks, social, social distancing um, pr and procedures in the school and we will definitely get there as well. So with this, I'm going to turn the, the presentation over to Rabbi Basowicz, who will speak about the education and maintaining our academic excellence from now as we move forward. Good evening, everyone. First of all, thank you, Rabbi Guttenberg. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Iris. Iris, I'm truly humbled by your words. As I enter my 10th year here at Hebrew Academy, I am so incredibly blessed to be part of the Hebrew Academy family. And part of that includes, before we mention academic excellence, uh, there is no academic or educational excellence without incredible and amazing educators. So I would like to first take a moment for those of you who have a gallery view, scroll through the gallery and look around for our unbelievable and outstanding principals, administrators, educators, faculty, and staff members across the entire Hebrew Academy. Uh, the culture and commitment that they have created fostering innovation, a depth of uh, personality, um, character, and loyalty to our school is simply amazing. It's not surprising that of those that we asked back, more than 90% of our staff has already committed to return for the coming school year. So first and foremost, uh, we cannot mention academic excellence or education for that matter without the educators. Uh, I wanted to point out for the past uh, two and a half or three years at this point, um, what that unique recipe has been and is at Hebrew Academy. Although our mission has not wavered, what that looks like in the unique Hebrew Academy blend um, has certainly evolved a bit over time. And you can see the slide in front of you, and really there are five components that we have invested in deeply over the past few years, and we will double down our efforts to invest further in the coming year. And if you look at what's going on in the world right now, I think this combination of ingredients and variables has never been more vital for ourselves and the next generation. First and foremost, we are an institution bound by Torah values, eternal ideas, the richness and beauty of our religion and our Masora to help us navigate this challenge in front of us and all challenges in our life. In hand with that, we are staunch supporters of Medina Yisrael, of the modern state of Israel and everything that that entails. Second, character and midot. Uh, although there are a lot of schools that have academic programs, I think Hebrew Academy is unique in the whole child and the way that we look to each and every one of your children. And like Rabbi Guttenberg, like Jean, like Iris, I have five of my own children at the school. And we look at, and our staff looks at, the totality of your child, their character growth, and right now in the world, developing gratitude, resilience, humility, collaboration, teamwork, and leadership has never been more in demand. Third, which we'll speak to a little bit more, is blended and personalized learning. Long before we had any virtual or remote school, more than five years ago, our team entered a venture around blended and personalized learning, recognizing that 
as our world changes, the platforms and tools that are out there can transform how teachers teach and how your children learn. And beginning five years ago, we joined with Federation, with uh, SAGE, and beyond that with the Avichai Foundation. We took about a dozen teachers at the time and we trained in-house experts and we have blossomed ever since. So the last three months is really a result of blood, sweat, and tears of our entire faculty over the past few years. Fourth, innovators, leaders, and entrepreneurs. I think as the world evolves dynamically, there's never been a better time that we invite our children as young as ages one, two, and three through our high school seniors to lead the next generation around the world. And finally, STEAM. As the last few months have also shown us, the complexity of engineering, computing, and the sciences, both to tackle this pandemic and the ethical issues involved and to make the world a better place has never been more vital. So first and foremost, before we talk about some of the last three months and how we aim to improve and reflect on what we've done, I just want to reiterate, educational and academic excellence is our priority and our commitment and I could not be more grateful of the extraordinary staff of colleagues that we have here at Hebrew Academy and the Herculean efforts they've made over the past few months. To a certain extent, they had one weekend to take their entire program virtual, and they have done so magnificently, and we're incredibly proud. Next slide, please. Blended learning 2.0 and hybrid learning. So having gone through the 200 or so families that uh, gave us feedback as well as our staff over the past couple of months, uh, those of you at home may not know, those parents on the call who are not staff members may not know that on an almost daily basis, our entire staff by division met talking about reflecting, tweaking, iterating and improving. How can we do a little bit better each and every day? But there are a few themes that emerged that we understood once there is a summer break, or to whatever extent it is a break, once there is a pause in the action for a long enough amount of time, we can regroup as a faculty, learn a little bit more, learn a little bit deeper, and improve a few key areas. First, we continue to expect extensive training for our staff. Now I would expect after tomorrow and Wednesday, all of our staff take a few days. Breathe, relax, and feel the pride of what you've just accomplished which is unbelievable and unprecedented. But as we look towards next year, our staff will look back. How did the tools work? How did the platforms work? What can we do differently? Where are the points that we could pivot? And how can we better meet the needs socially, emotionally, spiritually, and academically of every single student? We anticipate, especially in the younger grades, whether we use Zoom or a different platform, we anticipate opportunities for smaller group instruction, especially in those grades, and opportunities where we don't have one teacher with 40 or 50 students, but that we build into a cycle, small group instruction. We anticipate to the extent if we're in a point next year where we are fully virtual at any point, that there will be more frequent check-ins, both from administrators and from teachers to check in with parents and students to see how everything is going on your end and share progress from our ends. We are looking back at every single platform that we quickly pivoted to, to see if there are ways in which we can streamline some of the different things that we utilized across every grade of our school. And as Iris referenced before earlier in this call, thank you to our incredible IT staff led by Jonathan Barrios and Sal Pereira. We ran a demo earlier, uh, we ran a demo last week within four different classrooms across our school, being able to in real time uh, stream and enable anyone who's off site for any reason to be able to tap into classroom learning. Granted, at younger ages and lower elementary school, we're looking at some additional options, but in the event that any family at any time chooses to keep their child home for one reason or another, we anticipate to the extent that we can simulating the experience of being in the classroom. And that is our commitment to you each and every day. And as Rabbi Guttenberg said, we are so excited to welcome you and all of your children and our entire staff back for the 2020-2021 school year. Thank you. So just to speak about a little, um, a little bit about the survey. So a survey was done and 196 people um, filled it out, which was really 196 families filled it out. We wanted to highlight three areas of the survey um, in, in particular. 
there were many different parts of the survey. What computer, what, what piece of technology are you using at home? And that was really for us to understand how we can better, better um, equip and handle all the students. So with this question of assuming all health guidelines for reopening the school have been met, and if given the choice, how would you prefer your child to attend the school in 20, 2021 school year? So over 61% said physically at campus, combination of physical and distance are 14%, unsure at this time, 14.8, distance learning and not comfortable, 4.7 and four as well. So the, you know, we, we've seen that and throughout the other questions that were asked, the majority of the parents want to send their, their students, their children back to campus, assuming that all of the safety and precautions are being, are being met. When it comes to how would you rate the overall experience that we've had on, on Zoom, we, 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 took out some of the, we took out the preschool aspect of this because we understand that preschool would relate differently to Zoom. And we've seen that over 75% of our parent body said good, very good, or excellent. But we also are aware that you know, for many students, the Zoom did not work. And that, that, that I believe relates to the 7.6 of the poor, or the 14.4 of the fair amount for, for how the, the virtual online um, experience. And the last question I wanted to highlight was, are you committed to, to participate in a family orientation session about the new health and safety regulations? One of our task force committees is actually training our teachers on hygiene, training our students on hygiene, and training all of the parent body on the new hygiene that we need to have in the school. So I'm happy that 83% said yes, and I hope the 16% who said that you don't want to participate in any, in any of this means that you trust us fully and, and we are ready to um, accept all of the students back. So now we're gonna get to the last few minutes of this um, annual meeting will be question and answers. So we took the questions that were uh, provided we summarize them into different categories that related back to those four areas that we spoke about, about the business operations and logistics, the health, safety, and the well-being, and the education. And we do want to tell you that over the summer, we plan on having many more town halls on a regular basis to update you and to be as transparent as possible with everything that we've been working on and what we see is happening, what are the trends, and if something has changed from what we said in this meeting, we will update you in a future meeting. So please be on the lookout for future town halls, and we're going to have the question and answers available, the questions available to be submitted so that we can answer them on the town hall. So the first question that we have here will be handled um, by Iris, and it's a question of will tuition remain the same in the event that the school returns to 100% online learning? Um, well, what I wanted to say to this question is I, I understand very much because I also have four kids in, in school myself and I do work um, and so I understand the tuition problem, especially if, if, the, um, if some of our, you know, if we have online learning or if we have to go to online learning, um, what do we do in that scenario? Um, I just, I want you, you all to first understand that unfortunately the school's expenses don't really change all that much. And the, the situation is very challenging, um, especially when it comes to reducing costs. I mean, we are discussing this on a board level and what to do about it. And we're, we're going to have further discussions over the summer. Um, we're looking at what other Jewish day schools are doing also, which is, I mean, that doesn't completely inform our answer, but we do take it into consideration. Um, we, know, we, we know that other schools have not really done much to offer lower tuitions, but, um, but you know, we are listening to parents. We are discussing things, these things amongst each other and the finance committee. We want to hear what everybody is saying. We understand the complications. We understand the arguments. Um, I, we want you to know that the school is doing whatever the school can do. And um, whatever savings we can afford to pass down, we, we plan to try to discount the families in that way. Um, we want to try to help everyone um, that we can help. 
And so, I, so bottom line is we will have answers for you a little later on in the summer um, if we have to, if, if at any point we have to go to virtual learning. Um, so uh, we'll keep you informed of those decisions. Like, like Rabbi Shia Guttenberg mentioned, we're going to have um, more town hall meetings with parents. We want more feedback from parents and we want, we want to speak to the parents more over the summer. Um, in the meantime, I want to urge you all to re-enroll anyway, um, because we plan on, on working with parents as much as possible. The scholarship committee will work with parents as much as possible. There, we also, I also urge everybody who, who even thinks they may be eligible to, um, to apply for, for step-up scholarships, to apply for AAA to to apply, you know, there and there may be other school scholarships and grants available um, through the state and federal. You know, we're hearing about other things that may be coming down the pike. Um, and so, the, you know, the the answer is not complete, but we will continue to keep you informed. So, so thank you. That's that's my answer at this time. But we will keep in touch with everybody. Thank you, Iris. So the next question of will the school have the same start time and end time? So the answer is yes. The school is planning to start um, in the morning at the same time at 7.50 and go until what, whatever time for each division, 3.50, 4 o'clock or 4.15. Or 4 uh, we do know that the procedures for how students are going to enter campus and exit campus will be different. Um, that will be part of the, the health committee where we'll evaluate how students are going to enter. Most likely there'll be three different gates with temperature checks on the west side of campus for early childhood, elementary and middle school, and the high school they'll be entering through, through the main gate where, and the staircases will be one directional, there'll be a one way up and a one way down, which will allow for all the students to, to start at the same time and then end at the time. The next few questions are, will students be required to wear masks? Can we fit all students on campus? Will students have to social distance? And how will you clean the campus? So I'll take one by one. Will students be required to wear masks? So in the 143-page document that the Florida State put out, they actually said, well, it depends on maybe. Um, they weren't exactly clear as to will students be required to wear masks. As of now, we will say the students will be required to wear masks. However, over the summer, we will reevaluate it with our medical committee, and they will determine what age it is appropriate, when it is appropriate, and how and in what situation will be appropriate or will not be appropriate for students on our campus to wear masks. Um, can we fit all the students on campus? So I would say, the exciting thing about this happening now is I give a credit to Dr. Amy Eskinos is that we've had many applicants recently apply to our school um, from all over this country and from uh, and from outside of the country because they they've one heard about our school also some of them happen to be leaving the, their, their communities and many of our admins are sitting and actually chairing the committees that we have which are working working one of the committees is a spatial committee so tony and edwin our, our maintenance staff have been working day and night here have measured every single classroom in the school every single space besides the gym and auditorium which is 76 rooms and we use a formula which is calculated to determine on how many students can we fit in each classroom adhering to this the, the the social distance right now of the six the answer is yes, we can fit all of our students on campus. It will look a little bit different. The classrooms will look a little bit different. Certain areas which you may not know are classrooms will be classrooms. But the goal is that we can fit all of our students on campus. Will students have to social distance? Again, that, the answer to that question goes back to what the medical committee will decide along with the board and administration adhering to the local Miami Beach guidelines, the state of Florida guidelines, the Miami Dade guidelines, on the CDC guidelines, of whether or not it will be six feet, three feet, eight feet, whatever is um, acceptable for us, we will be doing and we will follow those guidelines. How will we clean the campus? So there'll be two parts of cleaning the campus. There'll be a night cleaning and a day cleaning. 
Every night, the cleaning of the campus will be a very intense disinfecting the entire campus. During the day, we will also be disinfecting the campus. If classrooms need to rotate, if third grade is going to leave a classroom and another group of third graders are going to come in, there will be a complete disinfectant that will happen in between the classes arriving, as well as on the playground and as well as throughout the entire campus. There will be Purell stations, hygiene stations, you know, one of the things that, that, I, that I joke about is that we had, you know, in our bathrooms in our school, we don't allow any staff members to enter into the student bathroom in the school. But now we're going to have to figure out a way, and we're working on it, to make sure that students wash their hands inside the bathrooms in the school. So outside the bathrooms, we'll have extra washing stations, with, which will allow everyone to, to keep all the, the hygiene that is possible on campus. The other sorts of questions that were asked was, um, how will COVID-19 impact specialties, lunch and recess? If we go online, will education change? How will Hebrew Academy address the educational gap? And what have we learned about education from being online? So the answer to the specialties, lunch and recess is yes. Lunch is not going to be in the cafeteria. Lunch will be in the unit group for each grade. So if the second grade group is going to be one, you know, three different units or two different units, depending on the makeup, lunch is going to be inside the room. We plan on still having J Cafe as a lunch provider and they will deliver lunch to the classroom. So students will not gather inside the large room. Specialties we hope to have, however, it may be integrated with inside the actual learning experience. We can't, we can no longer take students into a computer lab and have students constantly be rotating through music and through art and through computers in the school. Athletics through the, the PE will, will still be happening on campus and it will be determined based upon the Florida regulations whether or not sports, after school sports teams will continue to happen. So if we go online, which we hope to not do, will the education change? The answer is yes. We've done a lot of research on how students learn online. We've been asking our teachers and our dedicated principals have worked almost every single day asking the teachers what's working, not what's not working. And as Rai Basavich, as Rai Basavich spoke about earlier, the blended learning will be more personal for it. How will Hebrew Academy address the educational gaps? This, this is going to be one of the two most challenging aspects of any school. In fact, if you look at the 143 page document from the state of Florida, I believe the first 45 pages discuss the educational gap. So it is our hope that we, in the summer, we're going to be training our staff on how to um, assess each student when they enter into the school year. We'll have to spend more time reviewing last year, which means the end of this school year, what they potentially missed and work to catch them up, as well as hopefully providing resources for, for parents over the summer as early as possible that you can continue the education with the students. What have we learned from being online? So there's lots of things that we already knew about in education, and there's lots of new things that, um, that, 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 we've, that, that we learn about online. One of the new things, um, and for me personally, this isn't new, is that students can adapt very quickly and they actually are very good at technology. So one of the questions that were asked is being that the students now are online and they know how to zoom and chat and do lots of things, are we going to in improve the technology in the school? The answer is yes. We know that students have now have the ability to interact more and are, and are more familiar with devices online. So we plan to integrate that much more into the academic program. Certain things that we know, we know that, that high school students like to wake up late that's going to be a hard one. How are we going to have students come to, come to school at 930? But we are looking at ways to, un, to allow students to understand that students need more sleep and how we can now accommodate that. We also learned about the class scheduling from middle school and high school. They were taking nine classes a day. And so through our own research and, and researching with, 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 our, with, our, with our teachers, to understand that it may not be healthy for them to have nine periods a day, but to create the various different schedules where the students meet over the course of two weeks with enough time to still master the material, as well as a flipped classroom model where the students can now do work with their partner in breakout rooms like we've done on Zoom and creating more breakout sessions in school. There's still lots to learn and lots of education that we are going to be learning as a school, 
and we very much look forward to doing that. So with that, we will close the evening. Um, if there's a question that I did not answer, please feel free to, to email me um, and we can answer it to the best of our ability. So I wanna thank everyone who, who have taken the time this evening to participate in this annual meeting and thank you to the board of directors for arranging it. And a special thank you to Brittany Jackson on the back end and also Jackie Smith, who has who, who worked very hard on these slides um, um, in very unusual circumstances. And we wish you we wish um, your son and 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 the third grade son our own Irafua Shalema. We hope to see everyone back in school on August 24th. Thank you, Rabbi Guttenberg, and thank you, Rabbi Bosowich. Um, thank you for, to everybody who attended this meeting. I hope that you found it to be informative. Thank you to the new board of the new slate, the new board of directors. Um, I look forward to working with you this coming year, and I look forward to working with the administrators at the school. Um, and I hope that we we're going to be working hard this summer for the families to plan an amazing school year coming next year. Um, we will keep in touch with you and let you know when we, we're having our, our town hall meetings with the parents. And that's a wrap. <laughs> Have a great night, everyone.